Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm James and today we're taking a look at a drone that's been out for a little while, the Seafly Faith 2. And why is that? Why am I reviewing a drone that's been out for a while? Because this drone fits in a category that is going to break a lot of confusion on a lot of drones, especially if you are thinking about buying a new drone. So please don't click away because I'm going to go over a lot of different facts in this first five minutes and talk about what's going to happen with the FAA drones above 250 grams, below 250 grams, with remote ID, wow. with, without remote ID, drones that are Wi-Fi drones, brushless GPS, three axis gimbals, all that kind of stuff. So what, this all started a few months ago. I reached out to Seafly because they're coming out with a mini drone under 200 50 grams and as good as the i've heard about this one which i had never flown before i had it i really wanted to check it out well they said that one's not ready but, but let us send you our c fly faith 2 which is this price right now on ebay you can get it on aliexpress starts around 200 dollars it's uh, 28 dollars more to get the little alien head on the top which is obstacle avoidance and it's 55 dollars to get another battery but man it comes in a really nice case and i'll go over that later it's a GPS drone, so all, that means all the satellites will lock into it and hold it in a position, and if something happens and you hit return to home, it'll, it'll come back and land right where it took off. It's got obstacle avoidance. Lots of times on these budget drones, this obstacle avoidance doesn't work very good. This little alien head on top of this thing works really good. It spins around, and it'll keep it from running into things. And it's got brushless motors. They're not brushed. There's a lot of drones out there in this price point that have brushed motors, and these are brushless. And I'll explain. And I've explained that in some other videos. It's got a three-axis gimbal. What does that mean? The drone, the the gimbal doesn't just go up and down. It tilts left and right, and it pans left and right. So it, it allows you to get these beautiful shots when you're flying through the mountains, and the horizon doesn't tilt. Also, this is not a Wi-Fi drone. What does that mean? Well, a lot of these drones that you look at in this price point, they're Wi-Fi drones and they, they do have brushless motors their GPS and they have come in a really nice case but they're Wi-Fi drones the Holy Stones the Simnas but what that means is it's connecting to the Wi-Fi of your phone and broadcasting a signal to the drone which gives it a limit of about 300 meters and if you try to go beyond that the connectivity is not very good but non Wi-Fi drones are using they're using the software in your remote and in the drone and it's connecting it and it's not using your phone, which gives it a range of about 3,000 meters on this drone, which is almost two miles, which is beyond visual line of sight anyway. But me and Kathy, I had this at about a mile and a half and I could still see it because I had clear vision to it and I don't have to worry because it has a range of three miles, a mile and a half out, I can still see it, I'm still being legal then I don't have to worry about the connectivity of the drone because it's not using my phone. It's using the software built into this drone to connect to the remote, which is which is really important to think about because usually you've got to buy a really expensive professional drone like a DJI or Autel or something like that to be able to get a drone that's not a Wi-Fi drone. But most important about this drone and where and what I'm trying to explain is this drone is over 250 grams. So in the near future, the FAA is going to require all drones over 250 grams to have what's called a remote beacon. Hopefully, if everything goes right, these Autel and these DJI drones, it's just going to be a firmware update and they'll be able to broadcast a remote beacon. But what's going to happen on all these budget drones that you can't do firmware updates on is you're going to have to go out and you're going to have to get a remote beacon, which is probably about the size of this plunger. Remember these old plungers? And you're going to have to mount it on top of your drone so it, it'll broadcast a beacon to let the FAA know where you're at. And these are going to cost between $50 and $150. And you may have to get a different one for every drone. So if you spent $200 on a drone and you got to spend $125 on a remote beacon and you got to mount it on the top, I just don't think most people are going to do that. They're going to get themselves in a lot of trouble. So this drone would kind of fit in that category of budget drones over 250 grams that could get you in a lot of trouble, but not this one. So I reached out to Seafly and I said, you know, is this drone going to be able to have a firmware update where it can broadcast remote beacon? And they said, yes, we're working on it. And it should be able to have everything that they need when the FAA releases that. The problem is the FAA hasn't set all the guidelines and we're getting close to that guideline. So it's hard for the manufacturers to know exactly what they want. But I thought, you know what, as a drone advocate, I've been around drones for a long time. These budget drones, they don't do firmware updates. But when me and Kathy got back from the mountains, went to go fly this drone again, and boom, right there on the screen when I opened up the app, it said there's a firmware update available. So that gives me faith in this faith that I can do firmware updates. So I don't know of another drone that's in this price point that is uh, that's a GPS drone, brushless motors, three axis gimbal, and 
have, and is able to have firmware updates and comes in a really nice case and gets good flight time. Uh, 22, it says 27, I got about 22, 23 minutes, but that's kind of pushing it. It has autonomous flight features, so it'll follow you, it'll circle you, it'll do waypoints, and it does them all really well. It's not perfect, of course it's not like, you can't really compare it to some $3,000 drones, but if you're wanting to spend two or $300 and you're wanting to check all those boxes, this one does it pretty well. But don't take my word for it. Look at this footage that me and Kathy got when we were out camping and flying it through the mountains. But let me take it in my backyard right now and I'll show you how the autonomous flight features work. And then I'll sit down, I'll go over the interface with the app, I'll show you how everything works and then we'll come back for our final review. So let's go put them up in the air. All right, so the first time I fly it, I am flying it at my house. My son's helping me. What's really cool is that little obstacle avoidance thing spins around when it gets close to something. It's kind of fun to watch. But let me show you something more important. After I've been flying the drone for a while, Kathy and I, we took it on vacation down to Big Bend National Park, one of the most beautiful places I've ever been on the face of this earth. And I've been to Greece, I've been all over the world. It's just so beautiful. Uh, but as you can tell, I just leave it flying for a little bit before I send it off to the wild blue yonder. Always make sure that the satellites and the GPS and everything's functioning correctly when you take the drone off, especially in a new area. I had to do a new compass calibration. And look at this. I, I did color edit this just a little bit to show you the quality of the camera uh, because it's in the desert, it's so flat. But this is the uh, Lajitas Golf Course. It's ranked the number one golf course in Texas. And those are the Rocky Mountains in the background in Big Bend National Park. Uh, that's actually the state park in the background of that one, but it's just absolutely beautiful. Taking a drone on vacation can just really add a much better element to your photography and video experience. I mean, of course you can get great pictures with your phone or your camera, but when you put a drone up in the air, it just blows everybody's mind. Here we are at San Lina Canyon. It's a really beautiful canyon. There's the window from the basin. Looking behind you, that's just beautiful. And there's a, another canyon we walked through. But enough of looking at this beautiful landscape. I just really wanted to show you what the aspects of what a two to $300 drone is capable of. And it's a lot of fun. And it's, again, this is not a Wi-Fi drone. A Wi-Fi drone, three to 400 meters. This thing will go about a mile and a half. And then I started to lose sight of it. And I was standing up you know, in a pretty high area so I could see the drone for a while. So let's go back to my backyard. It turns real slow. I mean, that's real. That's on sport mode, too. See the obstacle avoidance turning? It yaws pretty good. See it? <laughs> Look at the obstacle avoidance. All right, I have flown over 200 different types of drones, and the one thing that I find in common is that they all have their little quirks. So this one turns slow, but it yaws really good. See that yawing? Yaws really good left and right, back and forth goes up and down really good. It's, it's very quick and everything, but it just turns really slow. So every drone is going to have its little quirks here and there. Maybe they make it yaw slower because the obstacle avoidance needs to catch up. I'm not sure, but look at that head spinning around. That just freaks me out. That is so cool looking. Uh, I'm really impressed with the way it flies. It's very steady, with the GPS, but as in any drone, uh, play with the controller, play with the remote, uh, learn all the functions of the drone. Just because you're familiar with one drone doesn't mean that the next one's gonna function the same. The follow me, the circle me, it's all named different and it just takes a little bit of use to the interface of the app and getting used to all the different controls on each one. Be sure and have a visual observer if you're gonna be spending a lot of time staring at your screen in the beginning to make to keep an eye on the drone. I got my son with me to help me go through all the different functions of it. Wait, what does it say the current gimbal something? The current gimbal angle is too large. All right, I don't know what that means. I point it down to try circle. So I read a lot in the Facebook groups, people cutting these budget drones down, but they just didn't take the time to learn the different aspects of ones like this that perform really well. Oh, I see. It has to be pointed down a little bit, see it? In almost all my videos, I do a review and instructions. I'm not gonna do instructions on this drone. I will sit down and go over the interface with the app and all the functions of the drone at a table. But as far as the flying features and autonomous features of this drone, I did get everything to work. The follow me here works great. I didn't try it on a bicycle like I do sometimes, but I just want to point out the fact that this drone is over 250 grams, but it's not a Wi-Fi drone, so it will be able to get updates, hopefully. I did reach out to Seafly. They told me they're working on the remote ID capability of this drone, and it should be available when it's released by the FAA. That's the most important thing about buying a drone that's over 250 grams right now. 
that's not a professional drone. So if you're looking for something that's in this price point, my goodness, this thing comes in a really nice bag, multiple batteries, brushless motors, GPS. It's not a Wi-Fi drone. I mean, I can go on and on and it has all these autonomous flight features along with the built-in obstacle avoidance that you can take off. And it's a good looking drone, easy to fly, great for a beginner, but even great for somebody who just wants a really nice drone but doesn't want to break the bank. So here's what the interface with the app looks like. One thing that's really neat about this app is it will talk to you. Not only does it have obstacle avoidance, it'll give you a warning right there. Obstacles detected. Please avoid detour. Obstacles detected. Please avoid detour. Not only does it warn you, it'll go from yellow to red as it gets getting closer to something. See, even the screen will start turning red and, and it tells you that, that you're about to run into something, but it'll keep it from running into it also. It's just an extra feature. So if you look back up to the top, you'll see how many satellites it has. Signal strength, uh, your battery power on the, those three lines at the top of your settings going down. You see the video camera, it has a timer and then camera settings. And then going over to the left-hand side, that's your takeoff button, return to home. Then you touch that radio to get to your autonomous flight features. The map's on the bottom. It tells you how high your distance, your vertical speed and your land speed. It also tells you, if you see that 58, that's how many gigs I have left on my video card. I just landed and took back off. It's telling me that my home point has been updated. What that means is when you hit return to home, it's gonna return where you took off. So it updated that. You can also go into the settings and change that. Also, you see those dots on the right hand side, that's your zoom. So you can actually zoom in and out while you're flying. And then the map on the bottom, you touch on that to set your waypoints or to find your drone. Sometimes if it gets out of sight, you can tap that and there'll be a line and you can have it fly straight back out to you. So this is what it looks like when you touch the autonomous flight features, the droning, the zooming, the follow me. Uh, one thing you need to do before you do any of these is make sure on your settings that the height is set high enough. As you see right here, when I hit circle and it, it, I find that target on that tree and it starts doing a big circle around it, I don't have my height high enough. It, it could have hit some of the other trees. So just be sure when you're gonna be doing these autonomous flight features that you've went over all the things that you need to know before you put your drone into harm's way. So let's go back inside, let's sit down, I'll go over the interface with the app and all the functions of the drone, and then we'll go back for our final review. Just really wanted to give you a bird's eye view of what it looks like when you're looking through the interface with the app. It's really pretty impressive, all the things that this drone does and all the functions that it has at this price point. So let's go back inside. All right, let me start out by saying this might be the one of the nicest bags I've ever seen on a drone. Because it's a really nice strap that hooks on here. I don't have it here right now. It's got a nice aluminum handle, a great zipper, a really good feel to it. Uh, this up here actually zips, which I like. You can keep all your props in there. It comes very well packaged. It'll come with the instruction manual, disclaimer, extra props, eyeball that goes on the top of it. <laughs> and that thing spins around pretty quick when it gets close to something. You saw that when I was flying it. Adapters for different phones, iPhones, Androids. Comes with a really nice gimbal cover. Kind of looks like an alien when it's looking at you. <laughs> of course, they are brushless motors. And you check your battery right here by pushing it. It'll tell you how charged it up it is. Slides in and out really easy. This little piece right here pops off to put your obstacle avoidance on if you want to use that. Of course, it is a three axis gimbal. So not only it pans left and right, goes up and down and it tilts right and left. Comes with an extra battery. You saw I got like 20 something minutes of flight time, which is really good. But everything fits in here really, really nice. This, these joysticks on the gimbals do come off, but you don't have to to put them in the case. There's the strap for the control for the bag. This is the charger, it pops in. I just really like this bag. It's very, very classy. And as I mentioned, it is over the 250 gram limit. Wow, it's 537 grams. That's uh, more than twice as much as a Mini 3 Pro. A Maverick 3 is 900. So it's right in the middle of the Mini 3 Pro and the Maverick 3 Pro as far as weight goes. Of course, you gotta fold the bottom ones in first. If you try to do it this way, they're not gonna go. But you'll figure that out pretty easy. Pretty easy to uh, change the props. It's just one little screw right on top. They are labeled A and B. Make sure you get the right ones on the right side or the angle of attack will be wrong and it won't fly. 
There are two optical flow sensors on the bottom. It works very well. Keeps it, keeps it balanced when it starts getting close to the ground so it knows where it's at. Very easy to pop this little piece off right here. Obstacle avoidance just slides right in. And it tells you, uh, you gotta pinch these. Don't pull on it. You gotta pinch these two sides. Of course, match up your electrodes. And it snaps right into place. It's very sturdy. It's not gonna come off until you pinch these two pieces right here. It pops right back off. <laughs> kind of looks like an alien warship or something, doesn't it? So the remote's laid out really well. I think these antennas are actually real. A lot of times these are fake. I'm gonna press this button to take a photo. This one to start a video. This moves your gimbal up and down. This is your function button. It'll change it. You'll see that on the screen. Your take off and on button. Your sport is on and off. But if you turn sport on, obstacle avoidance will be turned off. Return to home. So I flew it with my phone, but let me show you on my iPad how to get the app to work. Open up your camera. It'll take you to the Seafly Go, you download it. So this isn't a Wi-Fi drone, so you don't need to hook it up to your Wi-Fi. It actually communicates with the remote from the app of your device. Now see right here, this is, this is one thing that I really like about this. There's already an update for the app. So that gives me a lot of confidence when the remote ID kicks in that you can update the app. Some of the more budget drones, you can't update the apps. So I do wanna go ahead and update this app. Connecting the ERC, it, it walks you through the steps. So we need to turn the drone on. Turn the remote on. You wait for the red light to go off and that'll tell you when it's connected. So now the red light's off, so I know it's connected to it. But, it's, but it's, since it's not a Wi-Fi drone, you do have to connect the controller to the device that you're gonna be using. So this would be a C should use a longer cord for demonstration purposes. And as you can see, the camera works really good. And watch this, it'll go from dark to light. So the automatic aperture and the light settings can automatically adjust for the camera. The camera's really, really good. So right now the obstacle avoidance isn't working because it's too close to take off to something. But right here, it's where you switch between the camera. So right here's take off button, return to home. Here's your autonomous flight features. They will not start until you take off. So once you take off, then you can go to the follow me, the return to home and everything that I showed you when you're flying. Uh, right now, this is your satellites. You can, right here is your obstacle avoidance. You can disp display your radar map. It, you can put it in the beginner mode and it won't fly more than a 30 meter radius. You set your, your height limit right here and your return to home setting is really important because if you want, you want this to be higher than anything else that's around you. So right now it's set to 30 meters, which is about 90 feet, which is safe around here. Um, if you want to update your return to home points, in other words, you, you've moved the controller and you want it to land somewhere else, you can open this up and hit update and it will change where the return to home is going to be. You can change your speed mode here or you can change it on the remote and you can set your, uh, your horizontal and your compass calibration right here. So horizontal means it's got a little gyro in there and you just want it to be on a flat surface and make sure it's not near any metal. So right now it's, ne it's right next to that big metal statue. So that's probably not a good way to set it. Now we're going to calibrate the compass. So you hit calibrate, you spin the drone three times. One, two, three. And it'll tell you to do vertical. So you want to have the, the drone facing up, spin it three times even though it did calibrate, it let me know that I was too close to metal. You know how when you get in your car and you start to drive and your GPS tells you to turn around because it doesn't know what is the front and the back of the drone? Well, you don't want a drone to know that. So when you calibrate the compass, the satellites in your controller know what's the front and back and the, and the top and the bottom of the drone. So it automatically knows the orientation when it takes off. All right, here's your camera settings. You can change it to, you can, if you don't want to fill up your, right here's where you put your, Here's where you put your SD card, but you can change your, your, your camera settings right here if you don't want to burn up your SD card with 4K, but 4K is 15 frames per second. You really want at least 25, so I would stay at least at 2.7. At you really can't tell the difference between the two. So here's some photos that I took when I was flying it. You can go in here and you can look at photos, videos, uh, what you, and, and what's on your SD card. Right here is your map and it tells you where it's at. 
So when you're setting your waypoints and everything, this is how you do everything to set your waypoints. It tells you how high you are and how far the distance is and how fast you're flying. Uh, oop, <laughs> it's wanting to shut off. It'll beep at me and shut off because the battery is down to 12%. And it does beep at you when you're flying it when it lets you know that it's getting low. And right here's your zoom. But of course it's, sh it's shutting down and, and this works really good. So let's go back for our final review. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching my review of the Sea Faith Flight. Sea Faith Flight. Sea Sea Fly. Sea. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching my review of the Sea Fly Faith. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching my review of the Sea Faith Fly 2. Sea Faith Fleet. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching my review of the Sea Fly Faith 2. What I think about it, it checks a lot of boxes for this price point. I know I've said that before, but this is not a Wi Fi drone. I mainly review budget beginner drones in the two to three hundred dollar range but they but they're wi-fi drones where this one and they don't have three axis gimbals so this one have a three axis gimbal and it is not a wi-fi drone it uses the technology in the app the obstacle avoidance actually works in this one most two hundred dollar drones the obstacle avoidance doesn't work uh it's got remote sensors on it it's got brushless motors it comes with multiple batteries it comes with a, one of the nice cases i've ever seen and with a drone at this price point hint hint some other manufacturers and it looks different, kind of looks cool. Kind of reminds me like a little alien or something. Overall, the longer, the more I fly this drone, the more I like it, the autonomous flight features, they work really well. I mean, of course the follow me is not gonna work like a Scotty O2 or something like this, but this thing does a lot of things pretty well. Doesn't do any of them perfect, but it does a lot of things pretty well. So it's gonna check a lot of boxes for a lot of people looking to get drones for their first time. So thanks so much for sticking around at the end. I, was, I know I was long-winded in the beginning of this video, but I really wanted to explain the difference between non-GPS drones, GPS drones, and drones that can't get a firmware update. Because a lot of people are gonna be stuck with drones that are over 250 grams, and they're gonna have to get one of these remote IDs, and they're gonna have to stick it on the top, and they'll never do it, and they're gonna get in trouble. If you stuck around this long and you got something out of this video, please like and subscribe. Subscribers mean everything to me on this channel, and I'll see you in the next one.